Hi, this is Teresa Conway Hayes in Meridian, Idaho, and thanks for sticking with me this morning if you've been trying to watch the Facebook Live. I'm going to check and see if I am live here real quick. Give that a chance to pop up. There we go. And um, so I did a little reading, and I think it might be Wi-Fi, so I tried a different Wi-Fi connection, and we'll see if that will resolve these interruptions. It also said that if I click on the button again, there'll be a slight blip, but it should reconnect. So um, anyways, we're going to give it a, a, a fourth shot here. So, I've already got the introduction on the other Facebook Live, um, but for the purpose of YouTube, because I do always upload my Facebook Live videos to YouTube for the replay, I'm just going to try and go through this real quickly. If you are watching me on YouTube, and it looks like I've got something selected that I don't want to select. So, um, I'm in the select mode for my assets. I need to get out of that. Boy, it's just a challenging day. Okay. So... I'm seeing stuff on here that um, this is probably going to be the most real Facebook Live that I have ever done. Okay, so real quick, I'll get rid of that one, and if you're watching this on YouTube please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then we have my host code so that you can pause the screen and grab that if you're going to place an order I'm really just rushing through this this time and um, then there was a notification about the giant year in closeout that's going to end January 4th and I told you about the paper pumpkin that you can order um, up until January 10th. This one has an add-on product that you can purchase in addition to the regular paper pumpkin subscription um, offering for this month. Right now the mini catalog pre-order is going on. Demonstrators can order from the mini catalog right now and then customers will be able to order from that new mini catalog which used to be called the occasions catalog starting January 5th. This is part of the celebration. You may be more familiar with that term. That also uh, will launch on January 5th. And so whenever you buy $50 or more from that mini catalog, you get to earn free product. And if you look at that top uh, right corner, that filled in flower um, DSP is what we're mainly going to be playing with today, as well as if you look to the far right corner where it says Punch Party, that's the stamp set that we're going to be playing with. During this catalog, this pre-order, demonstrators can also now order the mini stamp and cut machine, and um, then that will be available to customers January 5th. I've got mine, and I'm really enjoying it. One quick thing that I wanted to show you is that I've been playing with digital planning and yesterday I got the idea of organizing some of my stamp product with digital organization, scrapbook organization. So I started with my subtle, not subtle, just one of the embossing folders is called subtle. But I started with my embossing folders and this is what I've got so far. If I zoom in on those pictures, 
within my digital planner. I can see the um, the images better, more clear. I can see more of how it will look when it embosses. I can see enough that helps me to plan for making cards. So now let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first I'm gonna show you um, what I'm working on. This is a new thing. I've been wanting to do a paper share for a long time. And yesterday I got to the point where I actually cut up half of my paper path and I cut it into six by six squares. And um, I saved the chipboard from the back of the package and then wrapped it in um, cellophane. So this way folks will know that this is flower and field and I'm going to sell these for $3. So if I were to sell this one and somebody wanted more, then I'd buy another package and I would keep a stock of this during the time that this product is available for um, paper shares. Because I know that for myself even, I don't go through all of my DSP paper and I would really like to go through the DSP paper. I'm running out of storage room. I can't bring myself to throw it away. I can't bring myself to use it as much when it's retired product and then people see it and say, oh, I like that, can I have it? And you know, it's not available anymore. So that's kind of silly. But this is the filled in flower and this is the berry delightful. This is what I'm starting with. Um, but if you have a different DSP that you would like, I have other DSP available that I can cut up into these six by six squares and package them and ship them off to you. So again, they're $3 a package. If you're local, I will deliver for free. If I need to mail this out to you, then I will just charge actual shipping and handling. So that usually ends up being about 50 or 80 cents for the envelope and um, then whatever actual postage is. So the first thing I did yesterday was I decided to go ahead and mount a lot of this paper. So let's go ahead and look at some of this pretty paper. And this is going to allow me to make some really quick cards. So what's nice about this DSP paper is that if one side is kind of floral and kind of feminish, feminish, I was going to say girlish and then I thought of feminine and I put it together and came up with my own word, feminish. So, and you want to make a card for um, a man or a boy, then you can always turn it over and usually the other side is masculine enough for a guy card. This one, um, I decided to put a white edge around there. Now, you all know that, or you may not know, that Whisper White is no longer available. Um, the vendor shut their doors and so the Whisper White product is no longer available. So to um, stretch my Whisper White until the basic white, is, which is the new product with Stampin' Up! becomes available. For instance, because I decided to do a white layer here, I punched out some pieces from the middle of this Whisper White layer so that I'm not wasting all this white on um, the middle of here. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take the filled and flower, flower and filled, DSP, and we're going to turn it into some beautiful cards. So we'll use that one. 
both sides. That one, I don't think I'm going to use both sides on that one. That one. That one. want to use that one but I'm looking for the smaller sheets because as you can see I pre-cut this paper and then I put it into a little case to store it all right so First thing I did was um, I wanted to know what all the color combinations were for this. So I got into my catalog and I went to the page where the DS paper, DSP paper is shown and I looked at what all the colors are that are in these various pieces of um, DSP. I can't open the catalog yet and show you, not until the 5th of January, but I did write it down. So we have Basic Black, Bumblebee, Cherry Cobbler, Flirty Flamingo, Granny Apple Green, Just Jade, Misty Moonlight, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Pumpkin Pie, Shaded Spruce, and So Chiffron. So I just realized that I got so distracted by all the technological um, challenges of this Facebook Live that I have not paid attention as to whether there are any comments. Okay, so now I've got the comments loaded and um, if you're watching, please let me know where you're from and if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions and I'll be happy to answer those as I'm able to. Right, so I'm going to put this off to the side because I don't need this right now. And I'm going to trim this down before I forget. This is how I use the mini trimmer for anything that's over four and one quarter inches. I can still use it. I just use a paper guide. Now I'm going to grab some card blanks. cobbler. I think that's cherry cobbler. That's the problem with pre-cutting your card bases and your layers. Sometimes I'm not absolutely sure what the colors are because sometimes the colors are really close. Like for instance, I get crushed curry and bumblebee confused with each other. So I'm going to guess that this might be Bumblebee. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need seven colors. So far I've got three. I'm going to put a black in there and a misty moonlight. Four, five, See if I've got a just jade. I do not. Yes, 
I do. Right there. Shaded spruce would be fun. I like shaded spruce, but I only have green. We'll go with pumpkin pie. Okay, that should be enough car basis. And when you have your papers pre-cut like this and organized and if you have a lot of cards that you want to make this makes things go really fast real quick I want to show you this fun glue holder that I have my friend Deb made this with her 3d printer and gifted this to me and I love it I've been using it ever since so there's a little space right here for the lid, and then you can turn your glue bottle upside down. You use the Tombow adhesive. Liquid glue is nice because it gives you some wiggle room. I am not very good about getting my paper straight, my layers straight, so that's a real challenge for me. And wiggle room helps. Another good idea is to take your bone folder, and this helps to distribute that glue underneath there. You get a good seal. This one is going to look gorgeous on cherry cobbler, but I was thinking I need this one for cherry cobbler, and I don't have a flirty flamingo, so let's see. Oh my, that looks good. That would be very masculine. That looks really good. That looks good too. Okay, we're gonna go with this. I'm also paying attention to what papers have very vanilla because that will help me to make my, whoops, make my um, whisper white go further as well. Oh. I was sloppy there. I got glue all over the bottom. This one is going to look so pretty on misty moonlight. You know what this is called, Misty Moonlight? Yeah. Most of my cards are side folds. Sometimes I do do what I call tent fold. I don't know if any of these are where it would open bottom to top instead of from side, from the side. This is going to look beautiful together. And there's really no orientation that I have to worry about on this one. There's no real up or down orientation.
looks like that's what it was, was an internet issue. That looks really pretty too. But I'm going to stick with that one. You know what we could do though? Is we could. I like both of those. So we're going to go ahead and cut this in half. So this is five and a quarter. So Two and a half and two and a half is five. So a little bit past two and a half. And if it's not exactly right, I'm not worried about it. And we're going to do that. not wanting to line up perfect so that's all right we're going to fix that with the ribbon or actually we'll fix that with I'm gonna think about that this one is so pretty I think this one is my favorite So many pretty colors in this DSP.
now we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven cards that we can put together. Now I mentioned that I'm going to be working with the Punch Party set. So when I looked at this, I saw um, that this coordinates with the heart punches. Mm, I can't remember which catalog this is from, but it, it actually coordinates with this punch right here. And so I stamped the image of the heart on Whisper White, and then I stamped the sentiment, you make my heart happy, and both of those things, I stamped them in Flirty Flamingo. And I didn't feel like the sentiment was dark enough. So I stamped over it with Memento ink. And I really liked the effect of that. So when you look, that just makes this card gorgeous. It's, it's a very simple card. And it just looks like a lot of fun. So... I'm going to take some dimensionals and I'm going to put them on back. This is the other thing I'm not very good at, is not having things crooked. You know, a person could um, make this more fancy by using ribbon or other things behind there and that sort of thing. But for this card, I'm just going to do very simple stamping. Um, so... Even before there was the issue with the Whisper White, I really didn't like to use my Whisper White as the insert. So I typically would use copy paper, or um, in this case, what I'm using is some white paper that my daughter brought over from her craft stash. And so she asked me if I wanted it because she was... Um, minimizing things at her home because she didn't have a lot of storage area. So I said, sure, I'll use it for inserts. Sometimes, especially when I'm using copy paper, I like to just put a little adhesive at the top and I might even put a little sticky note in there saying, that this card can easily be reused. So I might stamp something in here and write a message and that sort of thing. But after the person gets the card, they could easily tear that insert out and reuse this card for someone else. It's recycling, it's repurposing, it's got a lot of great potential for um, Sending on the love. <coughs> okay, let's see. What do we have next? All right, the next one was this postage stamp. So I went ahead and I mounted this stamp that has this border image. And it has the sentiment, I'm sorry. Um, let's use that for this one. 
So we need some Whisper White and Memento. And I'm actually going to take my pumpkin pie marker and I'm going to color around the edge. Mm, that's not going to work. I was going to use the ink pad too, but that won't work. Markers are a great way to have more colors in your ink inventory and not have to spend as much money. So I haven't looked at the prices for a while. So a marker is like $3.50, maybe $4. And an ink pad is probably about $7.50. So it's a lot cheaper to buy markers and they don't take up as much space as the ink pads. So because I came up with the idea that I did, I'm going to have to use the black marker. Just a basic black marker. I'm going to huff on this. Oh, and I forgot to put my piercing mat underneath. Not bad, not great. Okay, but so I don't slow things down, I'm going to go ahead and take the postage stamp. No, I'm not. So that's one idea. Now I'm going to take my piercing mat and put it underneath here and turn that over and we'll just do all black. So that eye just, well, that's just the way that eye stamps actually. Yeah, the other one was speared. Yep, I was right. This punch is perfect for this. some dimensions on that. There's a fast sympathy card or just I've used these types of cards for grandkids that um, didn't behave themselves at school with another student or a teacher and use it as a card to teach them, um, you know, to be humble. Okay. 
Okay, so we've done with that one. The next one, what we're going to do is for, I've already got the scalloped oval punched out. This is going to be a great opportunity to demonstrate the double oval punch. This is a new punch in the mini catalog. And I'm going to use this image here. And I'm going to use Misty Moonlight. Okay, so it is easier to stamp the image first. Like that. And let's see, we're gonna use a thank you sentiment after I stamp it, then I'll be able to see exactly what it says. This is a heartfelt thanks for everything. Now I could punch it out just like that. Actually, I'll go ahead and punch it, but I'll still show you something else that can be done. So then a person could punch out the little circle or oval and I need a sticky note to do this. Then we can stamp sentiment there. And then I want to be careful not to touch that too much. We can line that up. That's why I wasn't worried about getting that perfect. We can use some dimensionals to give it some dimension.
um, on our card. famous for putting things on upside down. That one's done. It doesn't look real great like that. If I were to do it again, I, I would not punch out one that already had some stamping on it because it would be easier to place if I didn't do that. All right, for this one, we have this. That's not a good color for that. What else do we have? haven't used just jade yet. And this says, my heart is wherever you are. We're going to use the postage stamp for this. deal with that because I don't want to get ink on my project. What I'm doing is just I'm cutting this off so that I can line it up in my punch. There we go. It's going to go in this card here. Oh, and with this set, um, I didn't mount it, but I just noticed that this goes together. Flamingo. Ink up this heart. Put that right in the middle. That's pretty. And that flirty flamingo and just jade look really beautiful together.
then we've got that card. Let's see. So for this card, I'm going to take some card stock and I'm going to cut off a strip. So this is a tent fold card. Then I should have done it before I put the cardstock done, but there's a couple cute little elements here. I'm going to use this one and I'm going to do it with mm. I'm just going to do it with black. And so now we'll use this here. And we're going to go ahead and grab the bumblebee ink. See if I can keep from bumping things. going to do a happy birthday card for this one.
again if you're watching the replay on youtube please subscribe to my videos if you're at all interested in this type of content and i'm going to trim this one down so that i well maybe not maybe i can get it in there I wasn't worried about the scallop side because I actually want to use that. And then I'm going to take a sponge dauber. I have a different sponge dauber for all my colors, practically. Not quite, but almost. This has a little black on it. Not sure how it got there. Just want to make sure that's not going to come off. I'm just going to put some color on this. Especially around the edges. This coming Friday is the second Friday of the month, and so my workshops are always the second Friday of the month at 6.30 p.m. at my home in Meridian, Idaho. They are in-person classes, and so they are $10 a person. If that is something you would be interested in, we do three projects that you get to take home. And um, if you're interested in that, please PM me and I'll get you the information on that. So, let's see, I'm actually going to glue the one layer. Try and put that in the middle. There we go. We did get a little bit more fancy on that one. Just a little bit more effort. Something like that might be fun to do some spattering on. somebody who doesn't have trimmers that would be a lot easier to do. I think I'm even going to add a little black spattering. There we go. I've got 
it over there, but I don't have it over here. Hmm. Now I've got too much on there. So that and that's not something I could fix. I'd have to redo the whole card. Actually, not the whole card. I just have to redo um, this. And actually, I would probably just pull this off. Because that's just too much. And redo that. But if you don't try, you don't learn new things, and you don't have happy accidents. Happy accidents are usually an easy fix, um, or they just plain look good, and you don't have to do any fixing. I can save this one for another card. There. That looks a lot better. So it's always good if you can do this uh, spattering before you lay down your project so that if it's too much, um, that's not going to bother you. But that one's done. Okay, so we have two more card blanks here. And I'm going to do something a little different now. I'm going to pull in this Forever Gold laser cut. on this one because this is going to be more of my guide card.
must have ink on my fingers. We're going to go ahead and pull in a circle for this one. I'm going to use a big sentiment on this one. This is, oh baby, you are already loved more than you know. So this would actually be a good um, card for someone who is expecting a baby. And I'm just gonna offset that a little bit. And there's a couple marks on there. So that's a happy accident that I will resolve with some embellishments. So this is the last of these sequins, the sequin pack, and they've been in here for a while and they've kind of gotten a little rough for the wear, so I'm just rescuing them. There we go, that one's done. We're on one hour and six minutes. And I thought we had one more card. We do. We have one more card right here. We can 
still use this gold, but this time I'm going to use something that is a bit more masculine. And I'm not sure though that those two designs go together. I don't think that they do. Okay, nope, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make this as masculine as I wanted to. We're gonna go with the leaves. That looks good, okay. I'm going to use my thinner glue tip. This is going to get messy, so I'm going to put my silicon sheet underneath here. That will stick. I'm going to go ahead and let it be down far like that. Take another postage stamp cut out and black ink. Now we've stamped sending you smiles for every moment of your special day. And that could be for a wedding, that could be for a birthday, it could be for an anniversary. And we're going to take, let's see, we're going to take that one little one, I can find it. And we're going to take flirty flamingo. Stamp it off. Okay. And we're going
going to take a dauber flamingos and sponge the edges. Now, because I didn't do a very good job of placement with this one, I'm going to put this at the top to just kind of distract from that. And I'm also going to take some gold. I'm going to take some of the gold thread that I have. check into where that got to. Okay, so today wasn't a day of perfection, but if you um, need to get a lot of cards done very quickly, this is one way you can do it. If you've got the time, you can take some time to plan it so that everything comes out just the way you want it. So, there's a lot of cards that have a, a real loving um, message to them. This is a happy birthday card. This is something that could be used as a Valentine card. Then we have a thank you card, an I'm sorry card, another card that could be a loving card for Valentine's Day, and then this one also could be a loving card for Valentine's Day. So this is using, <clears throat> excuse me, this is using the um, flower and field. <coughs> I've been talking too long. And um, I hope you got some ideas from it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you'd like to order, you can go to my um, blog at stampinbookkeeper.com. 
and you can click on the shop online online link and I'll also have that in the description for the YouTube video and um, I will see you again next time thanks for watching bye